This is my new module, a random looping sequencer, which I've named for Christopher Strachey, a pioneering computer scientist who went up to Cambridge in 1935, where he met Alan Turing, a name you'll be familiar with. Christopher went on to do all sorts of interesting things in his life and career, not least working on the development of the computing language CPL, which was a precursor of C, which is involved in the language which is running on the controller inside this sequencer, which is a nice circular story. But perhaps the most important link to electronic music is the fact that Christopher worked on Alan Turing's Mark I and Mark II computers here in Manchester and coded them to play music. He was one of the first people in the world to do so, to code computers to play music. He was certainly the first person in England to do that. And his work led to the world's first recording of computer-generated music. I'll put some links below this video to allow you to chase up that story and to hear those recordings. I've spoken about Alan Turing. Well, the left-hand side of the front panel of this module is an implementation of the Turing machine, a familiar and rightly famous Eurorack module from Music Thing Modular. The line of LEDs on Strachey is a direct copy of the line of LEDs on the Turing machine. And this big conspicuous control on the Turing machine is this control here, the first of the major controls on the Strachey sequencer, which I've named Turing because I thought that was the best name for it. It doesn't have a name on the Turing machine, but uh, I call it Turing. For those of you not familiar with the Turing machine, it generates a gate sequence which can be randomised or held uh, as a repeating sequence and is of a variable length, uh, set by a length control. And that gate, gate sequence drives uh, the weights of a sequencer. Ordinarily in the Turing machine, well, well, I should first say that there is an analog output comes from the Turing machine, which is reproduced here down at the bottom right. It's bottom right on the Turing machine as well. But ordinarily you might connect the those gates to an expander module of, of this kind, Music Thing Modular's voltages module, in which case you set up weights on these sliders in order to make some is interesting outputs as a consequence of these gates being excited. Inside Strachey there is effectively an emulation of the voltages expander but of course you don't see the sliders because I've programmed settings of the sliders in what I've called tunings selected by this second control. And so for any gate pattern and tuning, we get outputs on the main output channel, which are called channel A. We can listen to that now. So we'll take a voltage per octave CV output from channel A and an associated trigger output for channel A and listen to the consequence. It's in a tuning which corresponds to an arpeggiation of a minor 7 chord. Here there are just three notes being sounded at the moment, which constitute the root, the fifth and the minor third, adding up to that, at the moment, just a minor triad. If I allow this gate sequence to get more complicated rather than the fixed pattern you're hearing repeated. We can add in the flattened 
7. Strachey sequencer I'd like to show you it takes the arpeggiated chords or scales or modes or whatever have been derived from the basic tunings such as the minor seven pattern that we saw a moment ago and develops it by adding to the pitch span that the arpeggiation covers. It does that with the span control and CV input as well associated with that. It allows you to add in up to three octaves of pitch range ex extension. It sounds like this. extensions through the span control. Now it's time to look at what happens on channel B. Channel B produces notes derived by the same gate sequence and the same weights, the same tuning as channel A. However, there is a difference in the onsets of those notes and that is related to this third major control, the density control as I'll demonstrate now. First of all, take the pitch CV output for channel B and the trigger output for channel B, if I can keep hold of the cable. You hear that the onsets are less frequent. I can turn them all the way down to be off. As I increase density with this potentiometer, they get more 
and more frequent until they sound on every clock cycle. But in the middle, there's a Euclidean pattern generator, which generates a Euclidean pattern of length determined by the Turing machine's repeat length and density set by this density control. And of course, there is a CV input as well, which collaborates with that uh, potentiometer to control the density. So importantly, you can modulate the density with a CV input and make things change. And as the pattern changes, then of course, the, um, the pattern that you're hearing changes and the density follows that on both channels A and B. And you get this sort of effect. various ways in which it can permute and swap around the weights and those different ways are called different methods. The method associated with having all of these LEDs illuminated which describe the different methods is a shuffle where it just randomly shuffles the order. You can hear I've got the minor seventh uh, tuning set up again because you've become familiar with it in this video. It's just got two non-zero weights which are sounded as this single active gate scans through. You can hear those two notes apart from the root note, fifth and minor third. If I activate this shuffle they will change in their position in the sequence. I'll do it now. They've gone right to the end of the sequence now instead of where they were in the middle. I'll do it again. They've gone further back and the minor third is now right at the beginning of the sequence. I'll do it again. They've changed in order now. It's going minor third, fifth kind of roughly where they started in terms of position in the eight notes. Done it again there. You see that the method indicator flashes after you've requested a change because the change isn't made until the end of the eight, in this case eight um, beat sequence. If you're on a different length then it changes at the end of that length. One more call on that. Conversely, method zero is to reset to where it started with the, in this case, uh, tuning for the arpeggiated minor seventh. This idea actually came from an analogy with bell ringing, um, bell ringing by both methods and changes. I'm not a bell ringer, but I'm kind of interested in and appreciate the mathematics behind it. There is, to demonstrate this, another tuning which has a descending major scale, which is typical of the way in which bells are tuned if there are eight bells in a bell tower. And another one of the methods, which is number 
six, if I were to continually invoke that by continue, either continually pressing change or using an external input to continually assert it, that's to say call it every time we loop through the eight beats, you get a bell ringing method which is called plain hunt. I'll demonstrate that to you now. Another tuning, go back maybe to that minor third and minor seventh, sorry, tuning that we had before, and then get a slightly more complicated weight pattern than just the single gate scan, something like that. Here I'm going to just let this sound as a repeated pattern, so no variation with the gates, but instead we'll just have the bell ringing method of plain hunt going on and you'll hear variation all of a sudden coming into this sound through nothing other than the application of this very old algorithm for permuting bells. Here is another way, obviously that plain hunt is just one of the, in fact there are 12 different ways of permuting the weights implemented in here. What, another way of introducing some variation apart from the traditional method with the Turing machine of, of literally generating new weight vectors, and, and, and gate vectors rather, a new way of introducing variation into a random looping sequence of by introducing permutation of the weights and changing the way in which the gates couple to the settings, the pitch settings of a sequencer. 